All right, y'all, 38 Chevy looking good. We're gonna work on the radiator slash cooling system today. All right, as you can tell, I already have the radiator mounted in the rear where I want it. Easy, use some steel straps, bolt them in on each side, bolt them to the roll cage on the top as well, and that's how it's gonna go. I'm gonna have to drill a hole in the roof or try and figure out a fill apparatus to make this work the roll cage. You can still take the cap off, but you know, filling's gonna be tough. I've got a bunch of boxes from Speedway still. These have all piping in it. This piping and tubing is exhaust piping and tubing, and that's what I'm gonna use to, you know, rear mount and plumb the radiator in the back window. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start in the front, start plumbing from the water pump all the way back, get to the radiator, call it a day. I'm gonna start with the front. I don't really know how I'm gonna do this. I know I have enough parts to, you know, somewhat do it. So I'm gonna start with probably the outlet line and just, you know, work my way to the rear. I'll be back when I have some progress getting going on this one. And like I said, I kinda gotta figure out how to do it. So, you know, what's gonna be one of those learn as I go things. Here's what we're starting with. We got four lengths of inch and a half wall exhaust tubing. That's gonna make up the body of the plumbing. A bunch of manual bins of inch and a half exhaust tubing. Gonna make up the bins. Then we got some flexible hoses. We have an inch and three fourths output to go onto the end of the uh, radiator that comes out. We have an insert that's gonna make the other end of this inch and a half inside diameter. Same thing for the front, but it goes from inch and a half to inch and a quarter to match the water pump. All right, here's the setup for the hoses. This hose is inch and three fourth going into the radiator with an inch and a half step down. I'm not too worried about that bottleneck. It's not gonna limit anything. The input on the water pump is inch and a half anyway, so at the end of the day, we're, we're still looking good. This is gonna curve down, go into a straight pipe into the bed right there. Same with the other side. The other side's inch and a half from the top. That's the inlet. Gonna go straight down into an outlet, straight into the bed, symmetrical on both sides. All right, quick update before we get back to it. Got the front radiator hoses all running to the front bar. As you can see, I welded in some spaces between them just to you know keep some air separation, keep things cool. Got those clamped in. Getting under it now. You can see how they're clamped in right there. Air separation between them. It's gonna kind of fold like this and be attached to the frame by exhaust hangers. Figured why not? You can see on the end, I welded little bungs, just enough um, to keep the hose clamps on, kind of like, you know, ridges. I just put the welder on it, put some bungs in. They, that's all they're gonna do. They're gonna keep the hose clamps from, you know, shooting off. These pieces are gonna be attached by two pieces of hose with hose clamps right here to separate the back bins because these back bins are gonna be all crazy to these front straight pipes. Just because I want, if I wanna be able to replace this, I can just take off one section, either the front or the back and just have it drop from the thing. So that's the goal. Before I get too lost with what I'm doing, I'm gonna to explain to you guys the finishing steps for this. So, we're gonna drill two holes right on each side of the fuel cell. I haven't drilled that one yet. Run straight pipes, directly straight metal pipes, exhaust tubing, directly up. Connect like this, connect like that on that side so it's symmetrical. We're gonna bring them down. You see the new pipes with spaces on all the way up front. Those straight pipes in the back are gonna have flex lines going up and round into the next bins of straight pipe that are gonna be connected from hoses right here. If that makes sense, that's a broad overview. Figured I wouldn't leave you guys in the dark and just show a massive time lapse, so I split it in two. So here's the rest. Let's go fab up the rest of these pipes, bins, get everything painted and get it thrown back in. All 
right, almost done here. Um, all I have to do is paint it. So I figured I'd give you guys a rundown before I spray it with paint so I can go over everything that I did for this, you know, build system. We hung the radiator in the rear, ran two lines, going into straight pieces of exhaust tubing. They're inch and a half everywhere. Put a little bit of silicone at the bases. That's gonna dry, hold them in place. That way they don't rattle around. Coming down, we have each of the lines going into the straight pipes from flexible hoses and the straight pipes run above the pan hard bar, just like that. I don't think that will hit unless I get crazy flex, but like I said, um, this isn't really a flex machine. So I don't think we'll ever have that much flex to where it's really gonna be putting pressure on that line. So is what it is. That line runs all the way. You can see in the middle, there's a little bend. I use flexible pieces for the bend. That bend is made out of inch and a half radiator tubing, just straight pieces that can have a little bit of twist in them because it has to go a little more flat towards the front. For the overflow bottle, I did a nice little gentleman's jack, put a mount on the bottom, mount on the top. This little magic piece of machine right here is a, a zip tie, but you know, holds the neck in. Ran the hose to the overflow, looks sick. You know, classy, only classy. Straight tubing runs all the way to the front. Here's what we got working with, with the front. This pink will get, you know, unkinked when there's fluid in it. I'm not too worried about it, it's barely kinked. We have the outlet from the water pump running to the top pipe with a 90 degree elbow with hose clamps on it. So all the joints are made of hose clamps. We'll see how those hold. Hopefully it's watertight. Um, there's only one way to find out and that's gonna be running it. So yeah, we'll see if those hold. But regardless, we have the input going to the bottom one all the way to the neck. So yeah, next step's gonna be painting it. Once it's painted, I'm going to fill the system, bleed the system, make sure it's all watertight, run it with just the starter. So I'm not gonna try and kill a starter more, but we're gonna run it just to spin the pump a little bit. Make sure water can flow, you know, and there's no big air bubbles. And we'll check that by taking hoses off and stuff, you know. All right, let's talk filling. Got a hand, hand pump, transfer pump, filling up the radiator all the way, leaving the top open, letting air bubbles come out. The top is open over there as well. I have to figure out what I'm gonna figure out a way to bleed it all the way to, I guess I'll show you. Just put, you know, a transfer pump, electrical tie to, or electrical tape to a wrench, let it sink to the bottom, you know, the huge. Gonna fill it all the way until Hopefully this hose on the intake gets full, and uh, yeah, then we're gonna use the starter, crank the engine over, let the what, let the water pump do a few cycles, keep going, repeat, repeat, re repeat, until the fluid has gone through the entire cycle. It's filling back up to the intake on the radio over there, and uh, yeah, I'm unsure how long this is gonna take, but I assume it's gonna take a very long time with a bunch and bunch and bunch and bunch of waiting periods and refills and you know that kind of stuff but the good news is there's five gallons in it right now and no leaks so you know sitting stagnant means no leaks good start <laughs> good start to the hose situation so i'm gonna give this a few minutes to rest let the bubbles find home and uh hopefully be able to put a few more gallons in that's a good sign this is the output of the water pump that means all the radiators bled through physics will have me know that these lines are completely full all the way up to the radiator for the most part. So I'm gonna dump this out in my pan, put this back in, line everything up, run the starter, which is easy. I have the starter wired up with its on and off switch right here, or on and off accessory wire right here, because I have the winch powered too and the battery plugged in over there, which means all I have to do is close off the battery. Yeah, sorry, I already wired in the battery and everything and ground it to the frame just because I was kind of bored before I had nothing else to do. So I did the battery just to knock it out. But besides the point, got to ground it out, flip the safety switch, run the starter for five to 10 seconds at a time, just to cycle some fluid, fluid through. And then once everything's all cycled through and there's no more air bubbles, um, it'll be bled. I don't know how long it's going to take. I'll, I'll be doing it for a little bit though, so. So that's the starter, time to bleed again. Repeat, repeat, repeat. <sighs> I don't know how long I'll be here. All right, had to wait a few days. Um, I'll tell you guys why real quick. In case you can't tell, we got some parts. These are steam tubes, had to buy two of them. 
because I'm not sure how well this is gonna cool, so I figured I want the most cooling for each head, so. Yep, anyways, that's what, this is where these go. These crossover steam tubes allow for air bubbles in the heads to, you know, vent out and go to each head, get rid of the air bubbles, allow for cooling. It's supposed to get rid of the hot spots in the cylinder, especially seven and eight, it's supposed to get rid of the hot spots. So, yep, gonna put both those steam tubes in. And then we're gonna top off the rest of the cooling. Everything's filled all the way. I'm leaving the pump in just for now. I just wanted to show you guys how cool the Gentleman Jack looks with the neon green cooling in it. I think that's, <laughs> I think that's awesome. Overflowed a little bit, I'll clean it off. But in case you can't tell, let me get to the top. I did cut my hole in the roof right here for the fill. I also have a rubber grommet that's gonna cover up the hole when I need to, but as you can tell, no more air bubbles are coming out. It's sitting right at the top. That means when it gets hot, there's gonna be a lot of overflow that's gonna happen. But I'm also counting on the fact that there's still some more space in the engine and it's not completely filled up all the way. That's what I'm hoping. Or I'll have a massive leak once it gets hot. But you know, either or, I've got about half the overflow bottle left. If anything, I can empty it out, put the lid back on it. It's a, it literally just one zip tie to hold it in and then replace it. So we'll see what happens when it gets hot. But so that's topped off all the way. That means the whole radiator is topped off all the way. That means the whole cooling system's topped off all the way. So all we have to do is wire in the two fans, put it to a switch, and uh, cooling's done. Here's how the um, here's how the crossovers look. Pretty easy to do if you get the O-rings on the right spot, because I didn't do that the first time. Some pipe thread, some O-rings, did one in the front, also did one in the rear, trying to help these hot cylinders. So is what it is, but like I said, guys, that's cooling done on the 38 sedan. We're gonna finish up fuel next time. We're waiting on one 30 micron filter to come in so I can finish up fueling. And then we're gonna do wiring. Once all three of those are done, we're gonna be idling in place in the 38 sedan. Pretty exciting, pretty exciting. Two videos from now, you'll hear it run.